said there'll be snow at Christmas. They said there'll be peace on earth. But instead it just kept on raining. A veil of tears for the virgin's birth. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. Another year has rolled around and I'm faced with making a short list of my top fountain pen experiences of 2021. Last year I did a whole thing about creating a grading rubric to make empirical decisions about what should be on the list. And that failed immediately. Because I didn't like the list. Then I created a spreadsheet based on my subjective impressions of the various pens. That helped, but I ended up still just putting my favorite pens on the list. So I'm going to cut to the chase and make this simple. Just my 10 favorite pens from my reviews of 2021. The only criteria is that the pen must have been reviewed or received in 2021. If a favorite pen of yours that I reviewed in 2021 doesn't make my list, now well, too bad, you're wrong. Tune in again next Saturday and perhaps your pen will be on my worst pens of 2021 video. Look forward to that. That list is a lot of fun because I get a lot of, well, I'll call it uh, creative feedback from viewers. Malcolm in the middle, more like mushy in the middle. Lose some weight, Heisenberg. <laughs> I've had a good chuckle over that one. I'm coming after you, TX Grizz. I should mention that YouTube now has done away with the thumbs down dislike button count. The button's still there, uh, so you can vent your tiny little personality grievance. But, like your personality, it will be invisible to the world. So go ahead, troll, smash that thumbs down button, and like those things you do at your computer in the middle of the night, they'll be seen only by you and God. Knock on my door! Knock next time! Remember that these are my top 10 fountain pen experiences of the year. Your mileage will definitely vary as you're not me. Aren't you the lucky one? Lucky Jabby Bastard! These are subjective opinions, and although I'm fascinated by your experiences and really want to hear your thoughts on your best pen experiences of 2021 in the comments below, I don't care. All right, Zip it. Yeah, I do. So keep those cards and letters coming, kiddies, and join me for my top fountain pens of 2021 right now. <laughs> I'm going to present these 10 pens in reverse order, starting with a runner-up. Number 11, the Pen BBS 323 Galaxy with a Calligraphy Number 1 nib. You've not seen this pen before on my channel, but there are a number of reasons this pen is on the list. You should know my favorite fountain pen brand is Pen BBS. You should also know that Galaxy here is my favorite Pen BBS finish. What you don't know is that this pen was gifted to me by an Inquiring Minds subscriber, Carl Mueller, from the beautiful state of Virginia in the good old U.S. of A. God bless Americans named Carl from Virginia who donate pens to me. Thanks, Carl. I told Carl that I was going to hang on to this fountain pen until the new pen BBS 14 karat gold calligraphy nibs came out, which was going to be RSN. And that was back in July. Those nibs just came out on Etsy this week, and although I've ordered one, I don't want to wait until they arrive next spring to show my appreciation, so I put this awesome pen on the list. I do have the steel calligraphy number no. one nib, which I fit into this beautiful 323. Just look how gloriously it writes. It lays down a ton of ink, has incredible line variation, and is smooth as silk. The ink here is Diamine Happy Holidays, and when you put down a lot of ink, as this paintbrush of a nib does, you see shading, sheening, and shimmering that would make your sibilant senior uncle stammer with astonishment. Uh, yes sir, yes I have. Number 10, the Hongdian 1841. This fountain pen was a complete surprise to me. I've reviewed a few Hongdian pens before I purchased this one, and I've been impressed by their quality. But there are few, if any, number 6 size nibs. This one looked like a number six size nib, although it's often difficult to tell from the online photos. It also looked like it might have been a smallish pen, 
but it was relatively inexpensive and I was attracted by the deep, almost maroon-like red. When I got this pen into my hand, I was immediately impressed by the silky feel of the plastic, acrylic, resin, whatever it might be. I'm still convinced that this is not injection molded plastic, but turned acrylic. This is a classy looking, well-built fountain pen with a very wet, smooth nib. It posts beautifully and is very well balanced in the hand. And I just love the matchy matchy of this pen with the diamine oxblood ink. Number nine, the Pilot Decimo. This pen makes the list not because I like it, but because it was the perfect gift for my wife. I'm not in need of pens that I take out to meetings anymore, but my wife is an author who is constantly busy having meetings with her book manager and consultants and therefore constantly taking notes. The pen is smooth, light, and convenient, and she loves it. It's also a great experience for me because she gave me my first gold nib pen in this Pilot E95S. So I was stoked to reciprocate with her first gold nib pen in another incredible Pilot fountain pen. Number eight, the Schaefer student pen from the 1970s. That this is on my list at all will surprise many of you. But again, this is about my most wonderful fountain pen experiences of 2021, and this one has to be on the list. You see, my earliest experience with a fountain pen was in the late 1960s when I was about in grade seven or eight. I got one of these Schaefer student pens in a blister pack uh, for a dollar or a dollar 25 or something like that. And it came with a pack of five Scrip ink cartridges, usually in washable blue. But you could also get a pack of Scrip Peacock blue. And I remember writing with that beautiful turquoise ink for the first time like it was yesterday, and that was 53 years ago. When I got into using fountain pens again just a couple of years ago, I set out on a search for a Schaefer student pen just like the one I had had. This one isn't the same body color as my original, which was powder blue, but the pen is identical other than that. And what shocked me when I had it in my hand after 50 years was how flippin' small it is. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. It was just like that experience you had when, as an adult, you went back to your public school for the first time and thought they had shrunk the lockers and lowered the water fountains. I filled a vintage Scrip cartridge with Lamy Turquoise ink, which is an almost perfect match for the Scrip Peacock Blue, which was discontinued a few years ago. Number seven, the Ranga 3C Ebonite. I just received this pen last month. My first Ranga was this Model 4C in Black Ebonite, which was another gift from an Inquiring Minds pen friend, Michael Stoop of the Netherlands. I loved this big, juicy, black Ebonite pen so much that I knew I was going to get another one. That opportunity arose when Mr. Candon of Ranga Pens posted a group buy offer in his Facebook group for the Model 3C. And this is the one I got in red ebonite with a number six size Yovo medium nib. I matched it with diamine oxblood, which seems to be coming a bit of a trend for me. I love this Model 3C so much that I dove right back into the Ranga pool and picked up another group buy, this time for a model I had never seen before, the Abbey Mayu. This one in an acrylic named Chestnut, which is just glorious. I'll be reviewing this pen in the new year as I just received it this week. Number six, the Moonman TI-200 Titanium. You know what I'm talking about? It's time to pay the taxes to the treasury. You're speaking with the spinning again. I got this pen almost as a dare. Someone asked me via comment if I was going to do a review of the new Moonman TI-200. I scoffed at the suggestion because it was obvious to me that the suggestion that this pen was titanium even considering its $67 US price tag, was a phony and a lot of hype from either the sellers or the Moon Man company itself. But then my curiosity got the better of me. Perhaps, if I got the pen, I could perform some experiments on it to see if it really is titanium and correct something that was wrong on the internet.
I was very surprised on a number of fronts when I got the pen. First, I like it. Second, I liked it even as much as my Wingsung 601 Flighter with the upgraded stainless steel section and the bobby bent nib. And third, it might well have some amount of titanium in a titanium aluminum alloy of some kind. I, I don't know, I can't tell. I'm no scientist or engineer. Either way, it's bad. I do know animals. I still didn't like the nib that came with the pen, uh, but I didn't like the nib that came with the Wingsung 601 Flighter either. So I did what I had done to the Flighter. I pulled the nib and replaced it with a Bobby Bent nib. And now I just love this pen. I take it everywhere, clipped to a little notebook. It's sleek, it's comfortable, and that little bent nib gives a lot of line character. And yes, it is diamine oxblood. I like writing in blood, so sue me. <laughs> Use a pen, Sideshow Bob. And number five, the Kaigaloo 356 with a Kaigaloo long blade nib. This one is more the nib that is on the list rather than the pen itself, although the Kaigaloo 356 is a wonderful new model from Kaigaloo. I've been very impressed with the new model Kaigaloo 316, which is a great improvement over the old heavy model. But this new 356 model uh, was a delightful surprise and has a strong resemblance in size and shape and acrylic uh, to the Pen BBS 308, which has long been my number one pound for pound pen of preference. It's a pledge pin, sir. A pledge pin on your uniform! Just look at that chatoyancy. And it even has the cool removable end finial feature where you can get at the converter to prime the nib without removing the entire barrel like the Leonardo Momento Zero and Ferrore. But it was the release of this new so-called long blade acrylic style nib by Kaigaloo that has really been a sit up and take notice event in my pen year. I've long enjoyed buying broad nib pens and having Jack grind some very nice architect nibs that have oodles of character for me. Like the top 10 of 2020 Leonardo Momento Zero Blue Hawaii that does the scribble at the beginning of each of my videos. Look at this nib right, and they are standard number six size nibs that are easily swappable into most any pen that takes a number six. This ink is Leonardo Turquoise and matches the pen nicely. Here's one in my Moonman M800 Galaxy. And you'll see another in a moment because number four is the Jinhao 100 Centennial. I reviewed this one just last week. And this one is on my list because it officially replaces the venerable Pen BBS 308 as the inquiring mind's best bang for your pen buck pen, or the IMBB for YPBP. I will refer you to my review for the details, but the skinny on why this pen is the 2021 IMBB for YPBP winner is that it is inexpensive, comes in a stunning load of styles and colors and has a very easily swappable number six size nib. And the nib I swapped into this pen, well, of course, it is the Kaigaloo Long Blade. And the ink is Diamine Jack Frost, just to break up the Oxblood Monopoly. Right, so I've dissed Pen BBS enough. It's time to praise them because this is the number three Pen BBS 456 black on black on black with black ink and a black nib i have midnight black raven black liquid uh, black. if mickey was here you'd have black and blue black 12 inches oh you're way off i'm calling this pen you guessed it blackie i'm happy to gush over this fountain pen especially since pen bbs will actually make my worst pens of 2021 video list next week sorry guys but not with this black beauty. Oh my God, this is a wonderful fountain pen. If you watch my channel at all, you'll know that I absolutely adore the Pen BBS 456. And now I have four of them in some relatively rare and mouthwatering finishes. There's Niango is a cat. There's Amber is a cat. There's Galaxy is not a cat. And now there's Black on Black Blackie that should be a cat.
In several PenBBS pen reviews, I've mentioned that I would love to see PenBBS come out with a jet black opaque acrylic. Just once. They have every imaginable color, hundreds of beautiful acrylics, but nothing in opaque black. And then they answered with this gorgeous fountain pen. Not only is it jet black with, yes, a black enameled nib, but it is in my favorite model, the 456 vacuum filler. So enough gushing about how it looks and the materials, how does it write? Well folks, this is the best nib of all the pen BBS nibs in my collection, and I have a few. This is just sublime, people. Smooth and buttery. And with Orochizuku Takesumi, the best black ink on the market in my opinion, I just want to write for hours and hours with this pen. And I can leave this pen standing for days, even weeks, and it writes every single time I call on it. My top pens list wouldn't be complete without a Leonardo. And I've had a few new Leonardos in 2021. So number two, the Leonardo Officina Italiana Furore Galaxy. I've said Galaxy was my favorite acrylic finish, but this just tops the best pen BBS Galaxy. It is like a deep, luscious blue version of the Leonardo Smeraldo. There is something about the way the color swirls in this acrylic that is just hypnotic. And here is my Leonardo Furore Grande in Smeraldo next to the Furore Galaxy. And the Furore fountain pen is outstanding in itself. The medium steel Yovo nib is wet and smooth, and I finally found the perfect matching ink for this pen. I initially inked it with KWZ Azure No. 5, but the pen had some issues with that fairly dry and sticky ink. It is behaving beautifully and producing plenty of shimmer and sheen with Dimene Jack Frost. With all the hype around the Leonardo Memento Zero, with all the special Jonathan Brooks acrylics and special ebonite finishes, not to mention the new Memento Zero size piston filler, the Magico, I think the Ferrore is often overlooked for the brilliant fountain pen it is. It is certainly at the more affordable end of the Leonardo line, and I know this one feels like a steal at the price that I paid for it. And then there are pens that you have to save up a few paychecks to put a down payment on, let alone purchase outright. Those are the I'm holier than now grail pens. The cool thing about a grail pen is when you finally get it in your hands and slobber all over it and impress your friends to the point where they want to stab you in the back with it, you find that there's another holy grail out there for you to pursue. But since 2021 was the year of my 65th birthday, I rewarded myself for surviving the drugs, the children, and the career by getting myself the 2021 Top Fountain Pen of the Year. Number one, the Pelican M800. I know I'm often seen as the pen reviewer that reviews a lot of inexpensive, Eastern-made fountain pens, and I've often tried to show that some inexpensive pens are every bit as good and often superior to Western pens that sell for 10 times the price and fail to write when you get them out of the box. And a lot of the 10 to 50% markup on some name brands is just hype and marketing. If you told me two years ago that I would spend $450 on a fountain pen, I'd think you were pulling my leg. Oh, you've got to be pulling on my leg. This is my Holy Grail Pelican M800 with a gorgeous 18 karat gold nib. Everything about this pen proves that sometimes you get what you pay for. Just writing with the pen has been a top 10 experience for me in 2021. Every time I hold the pen, I feel its quality, and it constantly reinforces the fact that quality engineering, materials, expertise, and the minute attention to detail demand a higher price. I consider $450 a bargain for this fountain pen. It's that good. My only beef with Pelican is that they don't offer the same variety of materials on the 800 and 1000 level Suvaran pens as they do on the 600, 400, and 200 levels. I suppose I should count myself lucky, as I'd probably own three or four M800s by now if they did. I tried to match the blue stripe with a Pelican ink, but I found that the best match for this pen that is wet and nicely lubricated is a Roshizuku Asagao. I doubt I'll ever use another ink with this fountain pen. 
I hope this pen will stay with my family long after I'm gone. Yes, it's that good. And there you have it. Thank you for all your support through another difficult pandemic year. Let me know in the comment section what your best fountain pen experiences have been in 2021. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section and you get cool emojis and badges too. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. Yes, you need stinking badges. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.